everyone. Welcome back to the Radical Care for Christian Counselors podcast with me, your host, Bethany Boring. And just in case this is your first time here, hi, <laughs> welcome. Glad to meet you. You're in the right place. And what is this podcast for? Well, first of all, it's for any counselor, any mental health professional, any pastoral care leader that is really offering deep communities of care for other people or want to know how to do that. But it's not just stopping there. We also offer these, a lot of, a lot of these great resources can be offered for parents, can be offered for teachers, can be offered for missionaries. Really, all of us are doing relationships with other people. And so the groups that I offer, the professional groups that I offer are for those that are doing this in a professional level or coaching or have their own businesses. But these tools and resources, that's why you do this on the podcast. <laughs> these tools and resources are available for everyone. And we actually have a community, a free community to be a part of. And there's also upper levels that you can be a part of. If that, if God calls you to that, we'd love to have you. But I wanted to do a free level, especially during here, during the summer, that you can be a part of these challenges together that we're offering. And so if that sounds good to you, Go, venture over to bethanyboring.com. You can join the community there. It only takes a minute or two, and you can be right into the discussion as we're talking about all of these great resources that we're using this summer to allow us to better understand ourselves, but also rest and enjoy the goodness of God with others. With that being said, we have covered so much this month, and my head's kind of spinning. <laughs> And so if that's you too, that's great. Um, and here's what we've covered so far. If you want to go back and listen or watch, because we're also on YouTube. Uh, so you can watch or listen to any of these podcast episodes. Uh, week one was all about, I'm trying to think actually, week one was all about relational circuits and what it really feels like when they're on, off, and dim. And we challenge like, what does that look like in your everyday week? And again, we're not fixing anything. We're just aware of what that looks like. Week number two, it's all about the levels of the brain. And some of you guys were like, ugh. The other guys were like, yes, I love this kind of stuff. But most people came back with, okay, Bethany, I get it. I've been stuck in this level of the brain. I had no idea there was other levels that I could actually enter into. And all, or chemicals, or there's so many different conversations that could happen around that week. Y'all, there's so much goodness there. So, and that was a basic overview. <laughs> There's so many different resources you can get into. So if you enjoyed that week, you can check out some of the other additional resources that I mentioned there. Last week, we started talking about manual journaling. And the way all this connects is that when you do this exercise, you're A, you're aware of where your relational circuits are. And B, you're just being aware of what level in the brain you're connecting at. And hopefully you're either in the midbrain or the frontal lobes. When you're actually doing this, but this awareness of like, wait a second, there might be some other things going on that either A, I want to bring to God right now, or B, that I just want to be aware of during this time. And it allows you to really enter into this time with God in a great way. And your first step was simply to ask God to bring to mind a moment within the last week, within the last two weeks, where you got to experience the goodness of God in a brand new way. And we talked a little bit about how that doesn't have to be an earth shattering, amazing experience, that it could be as simple as playing with your dog in the backyard. It could be as simple as laughing with your kids. It could be seeing a sunrise or a sunset. It could be walking in your yard with bare feet. <laughs> it could be just so many different things. And a lot of times when we actually spend minutes going through the senses of that experience, we allow ourselves to really, A, re-experience, but B, we might know the things that God was doing in that moment that we completely missed until we go back and we really sit with that experience longer. And a lot of times we miss that in our everyday because we're going so fast and allows us to do that. So with that being said, if you've already done part one and you've allowed yourself to really just get still, you've gone through all of the senses, you've spent some time with God, but maybe you set a five minute timer. Maybe you gave yourself half an hour to an hour. I mean, you guys are amazing. Like how much time you spend on it is totally up to you. But part two is a little different. Part two is the part where you get to receive and hear directly from God about what you wrote. 
And it's kind of interesting because this can be hit people in so many different ways. Um, and I've seen it done in so many different ways, but I'm going to introduce just a couple methods here and you may try on a couple for size to see, okay, like I really like this or I haven't tried this before. Wow. How does this work? You know? And so just to be aware of it, just be experiencing it. And a lot of times people do both of these together. The reason that we separated it is because I found that just doing that first part can be really challenging for some people. And I don't want to rush you. I didn't want to rush you guys immediately into the second part. And so that's why we broke this into two parts. But again, when people do practice it normally, it can be practiced in two parts, but it doesn't really hurt just leaving yourself at the first part. Oh my goodness, I've had an amazing experience where God let me just sit with all of my senses in this moment that he gave me. Yeah, that's such a horrible place to leave off at, you know? <laughs> so it's not like it's hurting you just staying with that first part. Um, but here's the second part today. Again, we're getting still, we might even read back what we wrote. And we're getting still with that again and saying, okay, God, what do you want to say to me about this? And again, we're not explaining a, a hard situation. We're just explaining this amazing situation that God got to do where we got to just go deeper with that. God, what do you want to say to me about this? And so we start out, my child. Sometimes people put their name. How we want to start out. That can help get the ball rolling. There are some people that I know that have a couple amazing passages of scripture that they like reading. Some people do their daily devotion in between this. They'll start out with a memory and they'll write it down. And then they'll do part of the devotion or part of the Bible reading for that day. And then they'll do this. Because a lot of times what we think we hear may not be the same voice that we're hearing in the scripture. Meaning, a lot of times we can put our own assumptions or feel like God says something in different ways and not always accurate, right? And so if we're hearing a voice that's condemning, if we're hearing a voice that's just harsh, that's not the voice of God. Especially when you look in the scripture, that's not the voice of God. And so to really be aware of that and who he sounds like and who he is. And again, just to write, okay, God, what would you have to say to me about this? And again, don't judge it. Because again, if you get in the judgment part of your brain, you're no longer in the relational side. You're trying to fix. That also means your relational circuits are off. <laughs> you see why we've done some of this pre-work before we got here? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what you want to do is just really write what you believe that God is saying. You, you can even have the safety net of, okay, I'll go back and give myself permission to edit it later. That's fine. You do you. But I just want to give you the permission to freely write what God would say to you, my child, Bethany. And just go. I sometimes use this session to give examples, but I've since quit because what I found is when I gave examples, a lot of the people that shared after that really mirrored some of the examples that I gave. And I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that with anyone. So I'm not giving any examples this week. Maybe next week I'll start with some examples of what that can sound like and be like in my own life. But I don't want to provide that quite yet. If you run into any issues, and this is what some people can run into, like I can't hear the voice of God. And maybe you've gotten into scripture. Maybe, and I'm not denying this, there are some people and many people actually that listen to this podcast that may not have a relationship with God. You may feel so far away from him right now. You're like, I don't even know how I'm supposed to hear from him. And a lot of times we think of God as a father and that can bring up so many different things, right? So many different emotions. But I want to challenge you to do this if that's you and you're struggling to really hear what God would say to you that. I want you to get still. I want you to picture God as a perfect father because that's what he is. Not your earthly father, not the father that you saw on TV. <laughs> Let me take all those memories away and say, God, if you could be a perfect father, what would that look like? What would that feel like to me? And if that perfect father could be sitting right next to you, reliving that story that you just shared on the previous page, how would he respond to you? Would he hold your hand? Would he 
wait to see if you scoot closer? Would he look you in the eyes? Would he be crying with tears of joy? What would he say to you? You don't have to even say it's true. I just invite you to get curious with that and just start writing. And then after you write, you really feel like you want to go back and change it, you can. But I really do think that experience is powerful. Just be present with that. And again, our community is here. And this seems to be a harder week for some people. Our community is here. And I challenge you, it's free, the basic tier. And that's why we did it for the summer, because I wanted a safe place for people to connect. So if that's you and you're struggling this week, even if you're not struggling, I want you to be a part of it. But anybody who are struggling we know it's a safe place. It's not on Facebook. <laughs> we did that so that you would have a safe place to really connect. And if that's you, I would love to hear from you this week. And there's a great community right inside just for you. It's not a huge community, but it's decent. And there are people there that can care for you well. And we'd love to hear from you this week. So with that all being said, can't wait to hear from you this week how all that goes for you and next month we're starting a brand new edition more tools to this so we're still continuing the challenge but it's a green new, new tool so if you're brand new for june it's okay you can go back and listen because we still have july as well and we're gonna have to have uh stories as well coming soon so with all that being said can't wait to see you if you're just now tuning in you got plenty of time to catch up and would love to see you in the community and with that being said, dare to do more than just survive, step out and thrive. See you next week. Bye, guys.